Hey guys, how are you? Welcome back to my channel. It's Steven. I am uh, hanging out in Oakland. Uh, I was going to go into the city, but I would have really had to hustle to get back in time for our van. So I decided I was going to hang out at the uh, hotel. I'm going to uh, make a little oatmeal in a few minutes, get something in my stomach, and then head to the gym, make a bite to eat for lunch, watch some TV, maybe make another video, and then take a nap because we have a long night ahead of us. We're flying from Oakland to um, LA and then LA to Philly tonight. So I'll want to be rested. Um, someone messaged me and then I got an email and there was something else. Someone else asked about, um, oh, on as a reply in one of my videos, they asked me to chat a little bit about my operational experience for my OE. Most other airlines call it the IOE, their initial operating experience, but mine is was an OE in my airline's vernacular. Before I tell you about that, I don't look at the back of this. Um, before I talk with you about what my OE is like, I want to show you my new wings. So, short story, I promise, short. So, when I got my conditional job offer, I started watching flight attendant vlogs on YouTube by the dozens. I mean, I was watching hundreds and hundreds of videos. Um, I watched Fly With Stella, of course, um, Beth's Fly Life, Jenny Ernst, Tiffany Give Me Reason, um, Trolley Dolly, Megan Kelly, who else did I watch? Um, Pretty Passenger, Alexis, what's her video channel? I forget. Um, God, there's like, there's two or three with United that I, I watch and I can't, oh, the Chocolate Stew, who else? Uh, but Fierceness is one of my absolute favorites. Now, she was making more flight attendant videos back then. Now, she's just doing more stuff like makeup and clothes and stuff like that. But once in a while, she still does flight attendant stuff. But she mentioned at one point that she was a brand ambassador for her airline. And I wasn't surprised. Uh, because she loves her airline, she loves interacting with her guests, and she seems like a really great representative of her her company, and also I think as a good flight attendant. And so, um, when it was uh, when I had the requisite time in as a flight attendant with my airline, you had to be there for a year, um, and uh, I had no disciplinary points against me, and I was qualified to apply for brand ambassador with my airline. And that was last February. And so I applied and boy, it was grueling. You have to apply as if it was a regular new job on the website. Uh, they had to go through the assessment again. And there was a face-to-face -face interview that was grueling. It was, I think, harder than it was to get the job as a flight attendant. Um, I was super stressed during this face-to-face -face interview for brand ambassador. And, um, but, uh, I got the position, so it's not a paid position. I don't get any money for it, but I do get a lot of sad satisfaction from, from, um, uh, being able to participate in different aspects of my airline and the business. So, um, I was able to participate in the last hiring event in Las Vegas, which is really strange. The event wasn't strange, but it's been strange since because there are people flying now. There are new flight attendants who remembered me from that hiring event. And it was just, it's just so strange um, to be part of something like this. I just love it. I love it, love it, love it. Um, but I got an email the other day from my supervisor saying, Hey, Stephen, stop by the office and grab your new ambassador wings. What? We have our own wings? How cool is that? I feel very special. And so I'm gonna show you my new wings. I am gonna cover my airline name up because they don't want us on social media, you know, proclaiming anything. So I'll cover up my airline. You know who I work for, right? But there's my new wings. Ta-da! Isn't that cute? It's like a little floating banner, like a little tattoo banner almost. Uh, with the word ambassador on there. I think it's focusing. And of course, my name. Um, so I am officially, I love this, um, 
a brand ambassador with my airline. Now that just means I can uh, help them out when they need help at hiring events and that um, they believe that I am a good representation of what a flight attendant should be in our airline. Not that I'm the best, it's just that I, that I, I probably follow the rules <laughs> and that I'm enthusiastic about my job and my company and um, so that's part of it. I'm looking forward to seeing those other aspects of what it means to be an ambassador uh, for my airline and um, so but I'm just super excited and I just I'm every day I'm grateful for the opportunity that I have in the industry but every day I'm more and more grateful for the company I work for you know it's not Delta it's not this big fancy um, legacy airline it's a very humble little family that's growing exponentially um, full of amazing co-workers and I honestly think that we attract the best guests in, in the air I had to tell you real everyday people who are interesting and I just love them maybe that's why I'm a brand ambassador because I feel that way but let's talk about <laughs> what you probably selected this video for is to talk about my OE experience. All right, so what is an OE? An OE is your final test that you have to pass before actually becoming a flight attendant. You went through training, you went through the final, you got your wings, you graduated, but you're not really a flight attendant until you prove to your company that you are a flight attendant. So uh, with us, and I can only speak on my behalf of my company, and I'm probably not gonna talk too deeply about the topic because I don't want to mess up and get anybody angry at me <clears throat> but excuse me <clears throat> so my co-worker there were two of us two uh, flight attendant candidates um, that went on their OE there's one instructor we were on an Airbus 38 <laughs> A321 this is where I would like to start to learn how to edit right um, we were on an Airbus A321 um, I took position C, he took position D, uh, and uh, once we got to our first leg, our, the end of our first leg, we would switch places and then fly back to our training center. So with us, our OE has to be a minimum of five hours. Other airlines, it's a matter of a couple of days, which sounds ridiculous. But um, so <laughs> if you don't know that you can do your job in five hours, I don't know what two or three days is going to gonna do but extend the, the difficulty and pain uh, but um, so we showed up at the airport three hours before our uh, flight we were we were told to arrive two hours before but we both like to think that we earlier is better and so we went off and had breakfast at the airport got a cup of coffee quizzed each other and made sure we had a little pep talk uh, before going to our OE instructor who was actually waiting for us early at the pickup spot. He was standing there, arms crossed, and he was tapping his foot like on um, Legally Blonde, the guy at the water fountain. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it just made us very, very nervous. Uh, and I was already nervous. But um, so we went to the gate, and when we fly it on an OE, we actually replace, well, don't technically replace, but we're taking the part of a working flight attendant. So uh, the, pers the person who was working position C during that day, at least in his two legs, got to sit down in a passenger seat and just sort of rest while we did their, their work to uh, show our instructor that we were capable and knew our job. So I chose position C, he chose position D first, uh, we um, boarded and position C in my airline does the boarding announcement and also the safety announcement. Uh, does inventory uh, in our galley and does some galley prep and uh, also arms uh, door. Um, and so my OE instructor, the first leg gave you a little bit more help, a little more suggestions. So getting through the inventory um, doing the announcements, that kind of thing. And he's just watching to make sure that I know what I'm doing, that I'm uh, confident about my job and understood my, my place and my part in the crew. 
And so we did that. And um, uh, I did arm the door under his direction because I wasn't a flight attendant yet. And you need to have that, you know, that uh, OE pass before you can go that by yourself. So I uh, did that. We boarded the plane, made the announcements. We did service. Um, it was my first time doing service. We didn't do a lot of service uh, in training. And then um, we got to LaGuardia, turned, switched places. So I went over to my position D and uh, Patrick went over to be position C. D, uh, and on the second leg, you got a little less uh, attention by the uh, OE instructor than you did on the first leg, which is why I chose C as my first um, leg because I wanted to make sure he would be at my disposal if I made a mistake or if I was unsure about something on C. D seemed a lot easier to me, so I didn't really need that much to assume, <laughs> uh, did, uh, didn't need much uh, supervision, supervision. Oh goodness, these new teeth. So, uh, D, basically, you know, greeting people as they came on board, um, making sure that they were briefed, the people who sat in the exit rows, and uh, double-checked compliance when it was required. So, compliance threw me, and this is the time that my OA instructor really did teach me uh, a great, valuable lesson. Um, so, when doing compliance, uh, you move through the aircraft to make sure people's seat belts are fastened. Uh, and secure, make sure tray tables are up and locked, armrests for us are down for takeoff, uh, that your bags are still completely under the seat in front of you, you're not on your phone, everything is on airplane mode, making sure that uh, guests are all uh, prepared for takeoff. So uh, we were doing that. So I did my compliance when it was uh, expected, and then he came up to me and said, mm, you're not, your area is not compliant. I'm like, oh, what did I miss? So I walked through again, and um, a lot of people's bags were kind of poking out from under the seat. So if you've flown before, you know, we ask you to put your bags all the way under the seat in front of you. Do you know why that is? It's not a pretty answer. And I think it's okay for me to tell you. So the reason we want everyone's bags tucked under the seat in front of you is that we, if we have to evacuate the aircraft, we have 90 seconds to make sure that everybody is out of the aircraft and safe. So if your super cute Tory Burch bag is on the ground or your backpack is on the ground and the straps are snaking everywhere um, or you have a crossbody bag, like a little cute little uh, Gucci crossbody, um, if you have that on and we have to evacuate and that strap gets caught on an armrest or a tray table or something, you're not gonna get out of that aircraft in the amount of time and the person who's sitting uh, near the fuselage behind you isn't going to get out as well. Or if someone's um, backpack or super cute little Tory Burch bag is on the ground and that it trips people as they're getting trying to evacuate, um, it's very dangerous and lives could be lost. I wouldn't anticipate it because I don't think I would have taken this job if I thought that that was going to happen very often. Uh, but people, we do have to evacuate aircraft, right? It's part of the part of the possibility of being a flight attendant every day. And so uh, compliance around bags is really important. And so when I went through and did compliance the first time, I thought people's bags were under enough, that they were tucked under enough. In reality, they weren't. And so my OE instructor said, Stephen, go back and double check your compliance areas. And so then I ask people to tuck their bags under the seat. And my approach for that is a little different than some. Some of my coworkers go, bags underneath the seat, bags, your bag. <clears throat> it doesn't take much longer to say, hi there, could you mind tucking your bag under the seat in front of me, uh, for just for takeoff or landing, please? Hi there, would you put that super cute bag under the seat in front of me? It doesn't take that much more time. And people usually listen. And the people two or three rows ahead hear you and they're tucking their bag in by the time you actually get to them. So I try to be super nice and friendly when I'm doing it. Um, but uh, yeah, compliance is terribly important to make sure it's done. So I did that. Uh, we did our service, our snack and beverage service, and then we deplaned and that was it. Afterwards, we met at the airport with the OE instructor sat down and he asked us how we thought we did. 
No, I did make one little verbal mistake when I was C, arming my doors. We do what's called an all call. So we, you know, arm our doors or disarm our doors. And we say a particular thing to uh, the lead when she calls and says, hey, is everyone's doors, you know, all set? I made a little verbal something wrong, nothing crazy, and I corrected myself. So when he said, hey, how'd you, how do you think you did? I said, well, I did make that one little mistake. I did correct myself, but otherwise I think I did okay. And he agreed. Um, and Patrick, my coworker, also passed his uh, OE. And um, I asked my OE instructor, I said, so, um, who was much nicer than I thought he was? <laughs> Because that little foot tapping thing when he met us really set me, I was on edge. Um, but he said, um, I said, what would it take to have someone fail their OE? And he said, well, it, it's hard to fail an OE. If you know your job, it's hard to fail your OE. People do. They make big mistakes. Um, you know, we, we have... A procedure when when someone's going to go into the uh, flight deck when a, a pilot has to use the lab or something for example we have a whole procedure and if you mess that up uh, you might be given a second chance but it's a pretty pretty important thing to understand you know um, if you there's a couple things you could do to mess up your OE but he said the number one reason that people fail their OE and it doesn't happen often is he said it was bad attitude you can fix verbiage, but you can't fix a bad attitude. And um, I've taken that with me. I've held on to that the entire time I've been a flight attendant so far. Uh, so, you know, a bad attitude is about the only thing you can't fix in this era, in this industry. Um, so what would I suggest in terms of getting ready for your OE? First, breathe, relax. You know this stuff. You just went through a whole training uh, <laughs> to understand what you have to do. Know your door operation. Know how to do your door operation. People will freeze because they're being watched like a hawk. Um, so definitely know the, the operation of how to arm and disarm your door. Um, know, you know, we, we were quizzed on our, I will mention, we were quizzed on not every piece of safety equipment, but we did have to actually go in and do our pre-flight checks. And he watched us do our pre-flight checks. We didn't have to say, this is the AED and this is how we use it and blah, blah, blah. We have to know how to pre-flight the, the AED and pre-flight the ELT and all the all the things that we have to know uh, in training. So we did have to do that. Uh, but um, he did throw a trick question at me, which I didn't expect, but I knew the answer. He wants to know what the pressure uh, indicator the numbers on the pressure indicator on uh, one of our life rafts uh, what was the range that it could be in and uh, I knew the answer so he threw little random questions at us to make sure that we were on our toes uh, but um, what else would I do I would definitely know your door operation definitely know your pre-flight uh, for your emergency equipment and um, remember to Adjust your seatbelt. <laughs> Remember to adjust your seatbelt while you're doing your pre-flight um, because you don't want to be um, just about to take off and you're still trying to get your seatbelt to fit properly. So make sure your seatbelt is adjusted. Uh, and what else would I say? You know, you, you really should already know your phases of flight. Um, but listen, be very aware and listen for the aircraft to tell you what it's doing next and what you should be doing next. When you're uh, taking off and you hear the uh, the landing gear retract, that is the beginning of an, uh, a phase of flight. And the same thing in re reverse, when that flight, that uh, landing gear drops, I know what's about to happen next and where I should be on that aircraft. And most importantly, the thing to really, really focus on and remember, and when you get on that plane, be aware of it the entire time. Listen for chimes and look for lights. When the flight deck, I'm sorry, when the flight deck wants to let us know that we're at a particular height and that one announcement has to be made, there's gonna be a very particular sound, a very particular chime with a very particular light that will happen right above the jump seat. Um, so you have to listen to that 
listen for that so that you know when that we are safe at a certain level of, um, of altitude and that you have a certain announcement if you're lead that you have to make. And if at that sound, if you're in the back, you know that it's time to start setting up your galley if you haven't already done that. And there's things that you have to do. Um, communication, if the lead in the forward galley has to call you in the aft galley, there's a particular sound and a particular light that will show up when they need to talk to you. And if you're on your OE and you're so distracted and you're so anxious and you don't hear your lead calling you or you don't hear them asking to do an all call uh, and you're kind of distracted, let me tell you, it's not gonna be nice. <laughs> Depending on your OE instructor, it will be very, very unpleasant. Or they might say, hey, um, you know, what are you missing? Um, what else? Um, oh, and the other light and sound you're going to hear is um, passenger call bot bells and buttons. When it is safe to go and answer them, when it's not safe to go and answer them, um, you know, how far away you can leave the aircraft if, if for a safety related issue uh, when you're at the gate. Um, there's all sorts of things, but really pay attention to lights and sounds. Uh, that the aircraft makes um, and uh, how to communicate with your your uh, co-workers and the flight crew and those are the things I would really make sure that you understood before you uh, go in your OE because it'll just make everything easier all right so we've talked about my wings my new wings we've chatted a little bit about my experience with an OE and some tips on what to focus on before you actually get to your OE if I did not answer any particular questions particular question or you think I missed something or left something out, please leave a comment below. I really do my best to read every comment that's left. My channel is not very big right now, so it's easy. <laughs> so it's easy to keep up with comments. Sometimes I just like a comment because I it's it would be a lot of work to respond to everyone by writing. But if you do have a question in particular, I'll, um, I'll try my best to answer it. Um, I don't know why you would share this, but feel free to share it. If you have uh, want to uh, like it, go for it. That's awesome. And uh, if you haven't subscribed, certainly uh, think about subscribing. I try really to bring quality, real life um, content that you're going to uh, be able to actually use uh, when uh, getting your job or becoming a flight attendant. Um, I don't film a lot of me making coffee and uh, making breakfast and... <laughs> Some some stuff that I, I do watch. I watch flight attendant videos and I'll sit there and I will watch them make coffee in a Keurig machine. And I'll watch them do a little speed, high speed scenario of them packing their lunch bag. I will watch anything if a flight attendant posts it. You're probably not going to see me do that. <laughs> but I do hope you subscribe because uh, I do think I have a lot to share. And sometimes it's in a, a, a manner that you might get where you might not get it from somebody else. So hit that subscribe button and um, I will talk to you later, okay? Thanks, fly safe, bye.